Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, uh, we will look at a few more graphs. Okay, so in the previous video, we talked about how to represent time series data by creating line charts and area charts. Here in this module, we are going to understand about geographic roles. We will learn to create geographical maps like field maps, symbol maps, and density maps. Okay, let's understand. First of all, let's understand what are geographic roles. All right. See, um, in Tableau, when you get connected to any data source, if there is geographical information in that data, Tableau will automatically provide us with two fields, latitude generated and longitude generated. This is called as geocoding data. It is basically the latitude and longitude coordinates for all the locations which Tableau recognizes. So does Tableau recognize each and every place on this earth? No, it doesn't. It doesn't recognize each and every location. Then what does it recognize? It recognizes certain locations which come under these geographical roles. Okay. So Tableau does not recognize each and every location. It does not internally, it does not have the latitude and longitude coordinates for all the places on the earth. It has that information, that geocoding data in its repository for certain locations which fall under different geographical roles. Now, what are the geographic roles which Tableau recognizes? Okay. Airports. So, if your data set contains information about international airports, you will be able to plot it on a geographical map because Tableau recognizes all the international airports. The IATA and ICAO airport codes are recognized. Area code. This is specific to United States. So anything that Tableau recognizes specific to the US, it is very clearly given by mentioning US in parenthesis. This is standard three-digit three telephone area code in in the US. CBSA MSA. This is also something pertaining to how United States is divided into different statistical areas, which is done by the US Office of Management and Budget. And these areas are recognized by Tableau. So when I say Tableau recognizes these things, these places, these areas, what does it mean? It means that it knows the coordinates to plot these locations on the geographical map and the coordinates are installed on your machine when you install tableau it's all inbuilt okay cities tableau recognizes all the cities across the world with a population of 15000 or more than that so small villages towns with little population less than 15000 they are not recognized by tableau However, we have a few workarounds. We have certain options using which we can still plot them on the map. All right. Congressional district. This is again specific to US. Every state in the United States is divided into congressional districts. Then we have countries. All the countries across the world. And when it comes to countries, it's not just the name of the country, even the codes, like the two alphabetical code that is given to the names of the countries. Okay, the two alpha code it happened here. Uh, the color was a problem. Okay, the two alpha code or the three alpha code. For example, if you take India, the two character code for India is IN and the three character code for India is IND. So whether in your data source you have the full name of the country or you have the two character code or the three alphabetical code, it does not matter. Tableau will be able to plot that location on the geographical map. Okay, um, so that's about countries. 
the next geographic role is county second level administrative divisions there was a time when tableau recognized counties only for the us now it recognizes for many other countries it it, it recognizes counties in uh, uk in france in germany so on and so forth nuts europe nomenclature of territorial units for statistics how the geography in europe is divided into some statistical areas and tableau recognizes them states and provinces worldwide states okay tableau recognizes them so state is basically a first level administrative division which is divided into multiple counties which are second level administrative divisions and finally zip codes for many countries across the world it recognizes them um, irrespective of how many digits would be there for example in the us there is a five digit zip code australia there are only four digit zip codes in india we have six digit zip codes tableau recognizes them okay so what i am trying to say is if you have information about any of these locations in your data source even if you may not be knowing the coordinates for those locations even though the coordinates might not be present in your data source only the names of the locations could be there tableau will still be able to plot them on the geographical map because it internally has the coordinates for these locations all right now let's see how to create a geographic map in tableau first we will learn about field map also called as the choropleth map it is a map wherein the area is completely filled up with a color indicating some value okay so the the problem with the field map however is that you can show only one measure because we would be showing the information through color we can show only one measure so let's create a field map here how to create a map all you need to do is take the geographic field into the detail shelf tableau will automatically use the latitude generated and longitude generated fields in the appropriate shelves like in the rows and columns and trigger invoke a geographical map which is brought into the canvas and on the geographical map which is used as the background it is indicating the data point now in this particular version of superstore that i am using i have data only for the united states and therefore only one single map all right now let me bring in state into the detail shelf it's going to show us data for all the states here i would like to indicate the profit profit from each and every state so i'll take that profit fill into the color shelf look at how each state is filled up with a color now how do we read or interpret or understand this color obviously by looking at the color legend and we discussed about color legend earlier when you have a combination of positive and negative values it is centered around zero so i have positive values in shades of blue negative in shades of orange depending on the value the shading will vary so now i understand that california is the most profitable state followed by that is new york and then we have washington and i know that texas is the least profitable state all these states coming in shades of orange are giving a loss okay here we can show only one measure because we are showing it through color there is no other aspect that we can control okay let me uh, quickly make a connection to another data source which is called as a global global superstore data source all right so under global superstore we have data for a lot of countries across the world i just want to give you a glimpse of how things work depending on the data in your data source so you because you might have a confusion or a doubt uh, on why did it show only the us why not the other countries that is because of the data now in global superstore we have data for a lot of countries so when i bring the geographical field country to the detail shelf you can notice how it has plotted all the countries on the map the countries for which we have data in our data source okay all right so 
we understood about field map i would recommend that you pause the video here and please practice field map and then proceed okay i am taking you to the next concept let's look at how to create a symbol map on a field map the drawback is that we can show only one measure through color but what if we have to show more than one measure two measures if you would like to show two measures you can try a symbol map so i will use sample superstore and bring country into the detail shelf it's showing us united states now i'll take state i would like to look at the data for various states now let me take profit into color what will this do it will give us a field map on this map i would like to indicate sales also so i'm going to take sales into the size shelf immediately tableau has changed the mark type earlier it was math now it has become a circle so it is representing the data with a circle which is the symbol used here symbol hence the name symbol map now i'll click in the size shelf slightly increase the size of those marks because some of them are so tiny they are hardly visible right so i'm going to increase the size make them slightly bigger okay this is better now how do we read or interpret or understand this map profit is on the color shelf which means the color of the circle is indicating the profit blue colored circles represent profits lighter shade of blue means lesser profit orange colored circles indicate loss and you can see that some of these states here are giving us a loss some of the marks are hardly visible if you look at north dakota south dakota very tiny data points because the sales is very less and the color is gray more more or less gray that is because the values are very close to zero here this gray scale okay this one on the color legend so we are indicating profit with color and sales with size texas sales is pretty good but what what use right it is giving us a loss similarly illinois ohio pennsylvania they are all giving us a loss even though sales is significantly good compared to many other states over here so to make these data points slightly more visible prominent to make them a little more prominent on the graph because now it's just getting merged with the background color what i'll do is click in the color shelf and give a border this is better right at least we are able to see those marks now i'm going to click in the color shelf and also turn on the halo option okay by choosing a color when you turn on halo it it becomes thicker basically that border becomes a little thicker and the data points become very prominent okay so this is how you create a symbol map to indicate two measures one through color the other through size now let's go and try a density map it indicates the concentration of the values okay the how how dense or how scarce the data points are in a particular area so once i show you the map it will become much more clear let me take country to detail and then i will take state into the detail shelf i'll also bring city into the detail shelf okay i'm looking at various cities where superstore has its presence where superstore is present let's imagine let's think that these are all cities where superstore has a store physical store is there so we can see that in this part of california it has a lot of stores here in this part of california again lot of stores are there here it is very scarce very few stores are present okay then we can see a lot of stores here in this block over here right and mostly along the east coast and some areas in illinois some areas in utah you can see that stores are quite dense here it is very scarce far away here we have a lot of stores dense one thick spot is there right 
So when we have such data and if we would like to indicate the density, we can use the mark type as density. I know it's all looking really bad right now, but when you use density as the mark type, it is necessary to adjust the colors. Use an appropriate color. If you notice, there are some colors which work specifically for density mark type. And my personal favorite here is density multicolor light. It gives you a beautiful map which looks like a heat map, which is talking about the temperature, the heat in the data. So wherever you see the heat spots, these are those areas where uh, Superstore has a lot of stores present where the data is very dense. Okay, where the data is very dense. Lot of observations, lot of data points are there. And here and all it is scarce. Imagine if this, this was COVID cases count. Okay, let's say I'm showing COVID cases count on this map. So wherever you see heat spots, those are areas where the case count is very high. Wherever you don't see heat spots, those are safe zones. Right? Imagine it like that, then it will make more sense. So that is how we create geographical maps and represent geographical data on a background map to add more context to the data. Isn't it? When you present it on a background map, the map itself uh, is kind of self-explanatory. People can understand it, read it better. So when you have geographical data, always choose to present the data on a geographical map. So when will we go for geographical maps? When you have geographical data, as simple as that. What are the types of maps that we can create? We have field map, we have symbol map, density map, which we have covered. There are many other maps that we can do, but we have covered these three things. Okay, we've understood that when you have geospatial data, geographical data, it is always good to represent that data in a graphical format on a geographical map. Hope the video was informative. Hope you are all liking the sessions and learning from it. Please do practice and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.